Have you ever wondered where you really stand with God? Are you overcome with feelings of guilt because of things you've done wrong? Are you tired of religion that focuses on rules that you can't keep? Have we got good news for you? It's time to listen in on some casual conversation with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski and discover what true freedom is all about. This is Growing in Grace. Hey, everybody. Thanks for coming along. The Growing in Grace podcast at growingingrace.org. Uh, we've been doing this for a long, long time. And hey, just in case you feel like you're not getting your money's worth, this podcast is sold by weight, not volume. So keep that in mind if you don't feel like um, you're getting your dollar's worth out of what we do here. We do everything <laughs> for free anyway. So <laughs> just kind of silly. Uh, we like to have fun here on the podcast, don't we, Cap? Absolutely. And in fact, I, I would encourage those who are listening right now to rewind if you can and go back and listen to Joel say, hey, it sounds just like Fonzie from Happy Days. Hey. <laughs> if only I could make the jukebox work just by hitting it, though. I don't, I've never yowza, done yowza, that. Yowza, yowza, yowza. <laughs> you ever run into a, a place that actually has a jukebox anymore? It's been a long, long time. The closest I've come to it is listening to Jukebox Hero on the radio by Foreigner. <laughs> <laughs> Nowadays, you can like, I I've seen this or I've heard about it anyway, where you could get an app on your phone for the restaurant and then you can have them play, you know, they've got digital music that you can have play overhead. I've never actually seen it in action, but I've heard about it. You know, I love technology and obviously it's making our lives easier for the most part, but I, I think there's sometimes things that just get missed when you can't just walk up to the jukebox and pick a song, you <laughs> right. know, with something that's actually, you know, you can touch it, you can push the buttons. I mean, that's part of the fun of the whole thing. I think it is, too. Yeah, we have we have definitely progressed in many good ways, but it does take away from some of the really good things that we did used to have as well. Yeah. Hey, last week we were talking about biblical teachings and it just exactly what does that mean and perhaps we've oversold that phrase uh, is it biblical <laughs> because a lot of people can say it's biblical by just pulling out a verse from the bible and trying to apply it to their way of thinking whether it be old covenant new covenant grace law works faith i mean i mean that, that's why we have into the tens of thousands of church denominations because everybody thinks so differently about so many different things, and yet we come to the conclusion that, okay, well, nobody has all of the answers, but here's how we believe. We believe this way, and so we create a church statement or a doctrinal statement, a statement of faith, and I'm not saying that those things are necessarily bad, but it's just, you know, your statement may be very different from the guy down the street and his church, he has a steeple on top of his church, too, mm -hmm. and uh, is just very different. And so quoting scriptures, quoting Bible verses doesn't necessarily make it biblical from a perspective of truth. It could be biblical because it's in the Bible, but that doesn't necessarily lead us into the knowledge of the truth, which is what God wills for us to do. And his spirit is within us to be able to do that. But that doesn't mean we're going to have all the answers. Joel, you, <laughs> you probably don't have it handy again, but for anybody who might have missed it, can you go back to the bird's nest thing? Yeah, yeah. Deuteronomy 22, 6. If a bird's nest happens to be before you along the way, and the tree or on the ground, with young ones or with eggs, with the mother sitting on the young or on the eggs, you shall not take the mother with the young. Okay, I won't do that then. Uh, you shall surely let the mother go and take the young for yourself, that it may be well with you and that you may prolong your days. That is biblical, man. So we got to live by that. <laughs> right? Well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, isn't Bible. that wild? It's in so, there. So <laughs> here's another one from Deuteronomy, because this, this is stuff from the law, obviously, that God established with the Israelites. But all, over and over again, we hear, you know, different churches, different church, church teachings saying that we should continue to, to follow the law or God somehow empowers us to follow the law since Jesus died. I don't know whether, where they're coming up with this stuff other than picking and choosing different Bible verses, picking and choosing different laws and commandments, 
keeping some, throwing out others. Um, But here in Deuteronomy chapter 15, starting with verse 12, if your kinsman, a Hebrew man or woman, is sold to you, then he shall serve you for six years, but in the seventh year you you shall set him free. When you set him free, you shall not send him away empty-handed, but you'll furnish him with some flock and so forth. But here's the thing. If they choose to stay with the family, they don't want to go. They want to stay with them. I will not go from you, they say, verse 16, because he loves you and your household since he fares well with you. Then you shall take an awl, which is a sharp tool to make a hole. You shall take an awl and pierce it through his ear (laughs) into the door. (laughs) He shall be your servant forever. You shall do likewise to your maidservant. So, Joel, it wasn't just an ear piercing, but you had to. (laughs) Can you imagine? I mean, can you imagine, Joel? Okay, you, you've been serving me, all right? I've got my family here. We bought you. You've been serving us. You're kind of like part of the family. You're like a guardian for the kids. And you don't want to continue on because you've got a good thing going here with us and you don't know where else you're going to go. So you decide, I, I like it here. I like you. I'm going to stay with you. And I'm going to sit here and say, Joel, I'm so glad you said that. Put your head up against <laughs> the door. Pow! Put a hole in your ear as you're standing there attached to the door. <laughs> Maybe someone as, look so at is it that as, biblical? <laughs> yes, it's biblical. Free ear piercing. Yeah, that's a that's biblical. Yeah, yeah. Have this all shoved through your ear and stuck to the door. Yeah, yeah. it's biblical. <laughs> it's it's in there. It's in Deuteronomy fifteen. And so, but but like so like you're saying, we can take these things and and we can laugh about them. And other people will say, okay, we're not going to live by that. We're not going to live by that bird's nest thing. But elsewhere in Deuteronomy, in this same group of passages here, you know, because I had read from Deuteronomy 22, you're, you're reading from Deuteronomy 15, Deuteronomy 12 talks about tithing. Tithing is biblical, people will say, and there are other things. Deuteron- Deuteronomy 12 talks about how you should um, bring the tithes, the burnt offerings, and the sacrifices. So people, some people will say, well, tithing is biblical. See, it says right there, bring your tithes. Malachi 3 says, bring your tithes to the storehouse that there may be food in my house. And so people will take that, say it's biblical. Tithing is biblical. Well, there are actually other tithes in the Bible as well. And so if tithing is biblical, which tithe do we live by? Well, Abraham gave a tithe to Melchizedek. So do we live by that tithe? It was before the law. It was before the law. So it's not a lawful thing. It's we're under grace. We're under the <laughs> faith of Abraham. So Abraham tithe. Well, what was Abraham's tithe? It was the tithe of the spoils of war after he had been in a battle <laughs> and, and brought back some people and some goods. And he gave a tenth of the spoils of war. To Melchizedek. And he also gave the other 90%, by the way, this is biblical, he gave the other 90% to the king of Sodom. But we never preached that one, do we? And uh, so we've got these biblical laws, some of which we say, okay, so Abraham's tithe wasn't a law, but the Malachi one was referring back to the laws from Numbers and Deuteronomy and Leviticus. And so, well, we're supposed to live by that. But where is it in the Bible where it says you should tithe of your money and give it to a church? That's not actually biblical, but many people have taken these verses and made them mean something that they don't <laughs> and say that it's biblical. So there's all kinds of ways we can mess with the scriptures and call it biblical. And by the way, the tithes in Deuteronomy and the tithes that Malachi was referring to was plants and animals. It had nothing to do with money, and it was for the feeding of a certain tribe. That was the food that God wanted, because he had told the tribe of Levi that they couldn't provide food for themselves. So yeah, we could go all kinds of places with this and call things biblical, when really it has nothing to do with life in Christ. Exactly. Yeah, tithing wasn't about money. It just, but people will make the assumption that it was because this is what they've been taught, and they kind of got this combination where the old covenant ran head on into the new covenant, and this is how it's supposed to be now. And suddenly, the high priest became your pastor, <laughs> <laughs> or your pastor became the high priest. But one thing you'll see throughout these different passages in the Old Testament, Joel, over and you'll find it over and over, it's sprinkled everywhere. 
if you listen obediently to the voice of the Lord your God and observe carefully to do all of this commandment that I am commanding you today. It was in that chapter I was talking about with the the ear to the door, Deuteronomy 15. You'll find it everywhere, 2 Chronicles 7. It's in the Psalms. It's in uh, other books of the law. It's in there over and over again. And uh, Joshua 1.8, here's one. You might have heard at one of those uh, success seminars, prosperity seminars or something. This book of the law shall not depart. This book of the law. Now, some people just think that that means the word, the Bible. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then, and only then, will you make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. So, you have to do it all. You had to do it perfectly or it wouldn't work. That was the law. You know, so these things get thrown around in there sometimes, but we're picking and choosing and, and you can't do that. You can't pick and choose which commandments will be followed. You either had to follow the whole thing, as the Apostle Paul said, that was the curse because nobody could do it, or the whole thing had to come to an end. But it, different parts of it did not cease while other parts continued. That just isn't in the Bible. That, Joel, that is not biblical. <laughs> no. No. And like Paul said, the, the man who does them shall live by them. That, And he was talking about the law. If you're going to live by the law, you've got to live by all of them. Just as it says there in Deuteronomy 15, like you read, and other places in the Old Covenant Scriptures where it talks about the law. The Lord says that you have to carefully obey all of these things. You have to do it all. James said that if you do it all, but fall in just one of them, fall short in one of them, you're guilty of all. See, that's the thing. We cannot pick and choose which laws we want to live by. You either have to live by it all, or you've fallen short of it all. The, the good news in all of this, the good news in all of this is that the just shall live by faith. The righteous person doesn't live by the law. We in the church have become righteous through nothing other than the blood of Jesus Christ. Through his death and then through his resurrection, we have been raised together with him, justified and uh, made alive with God through nothing that we've done, not through obeying any of these Old Testament commandments, not through obeying any of the laws or any of the law as a whole. And that's the good news, because we live by faith, not by law. The law is not a faith, as we shared uh, several week weeks ago on the podcast. So is it biblical? Well, certainly everything that you read in the Bible is biblical. <laughs> but we got to be careful to rightly divide the word of truth, as Paul talked about. So keep that in mind when you uh, pick up your Bible to read it, which covenant is being referred to. Uh, when Jesus talks, which of his words were regarding the Old Covenant, which were regarding the New Covenant, that's a whole other thing that we've talked about here on the podcast, the words of Jesus. Keep all that in mind as you read the Bible. Yes, it's all biblical, but does it all fit into the life in Christ? No, of course it doesn't. Uh, but it's all there for a reason. This has been Growing in Grace with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezicki. Heard online through various internet sources around the world each week. To access hundreds of past programs, visit graceroots.org. Share it with a friend and listen again next week for more Growing in Grace.